Hey everybody, welcome to Mindful Social. This is the show about people who use social media in a mindful way and also run their business in a mindful way. And I'm really excited to have Leslie Nance this week. She is a wonderful person who has been through a hell of a lot. But she came out on the other side with a mission and a plan. And I'm really excited to have you here. Leslie, why don't you give people a little bit of background about who you are and what you do? Yeah. So hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I, our first conversation, I was so excited. I was like, I can't wait to do this. It's like, we just, I mean, we, we could have talked for like all day. So it was amazing. Um, so I am the founder of gotokitchens.com. And a lot of people are like, what's that? What does that mean? Um, I encourage people to go to their kitchen. I go to my kitchen every day in live broadcasting and help people um, find a path to making their bodies inhospitable to cancer. And the reason I do that is because I'm a four-year cancer survivor. I'm going into my fifth year. Yay. Uh, <laughs> but I am a four-year cancer survivor, and I, I, I'm really passionate about not ever having cancer again. And apparently, that passion is quite visible uh, because everybody's like, you need to like share this information with like everybody you know. And I'm like, well, what about everybody I don't know? We should share it there too. So that's where Go To Kitchen started from. And, um, and I do that mostly through live broadcasting and a lot, a lot of backend work and social media as well. And I love my job. I love what I do. I'm working harder than I've ever worked in my entire life and never been so fulfilled as well. So that's wonderful. And, and I, you know, your story is pretty amazing that, you know, you just kind of took the bull by the horns and said, okay, I ain't going to let this happen. Right. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was like, this is not, I mean, I, I won't lie for two months. I was a basket case. I mean, total like basket case. I, I was a drama queen. I've got cancer. <laughs> you know, I'm dying. I mean, that's what I felt like for two months. And then finally I had a pivot where it was, it was, no, wait a second. Wait just a darn second. You know, I, this is not going to get me. And, um, I became the CEO of my health and, and my life actually, and decided that these doctors are not going to push me around and I'm going to do what I think is best for me. And either they get on board with it or they, or they get fired. And so, <laughs> and, and, and so that's, that's, that's what happened. And they didn't give me very good odds. I mean, quite frankly, they mm. didn't, they said if I didn't do all the stuff that they wanted me to do, that I was going to have cancer again in a year. And I said, well, if you're going to give me those kind of odds, I'd rather just, I'd rather do what I think is right for me. I mean, and see what happens because you're not telling me anything good either. So, um, so that's what I did. And it's been an amazing journey. I can imagine. I can imagine. And you've taken a lot of people along you along with you on that journey, but let's, Talk a little bit about how you started that and how you got to where you are now because, you know, you're doing live streaming, you, you have an amazing personality for live streams, so you really, uh, you bring it and you seem to bring it 24-7, which is pretty amazing. Uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about the process that, that brought, you to, brought you here? So the first idea was YouTube. I, I was going to be a YouTube star. I mean, and I really felt like that that was, I, that still may happen. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but at this point, I was, I, when I first started this, the first idea was to um, wear a GoPro on my head. I thought it was sitting here, but I don't have it. I have this whole rig where you wear the GoPro, like on a helmet thing on your head. <laughs> and I was pointing the GoPro down and all you could see was my hands. And I mm -hmm. called myself the hands. In fact, my email is talk to the hands and I've just been too lazy to change it. But because I, I wasn't going to show my face ever. And so ever, ever, I was just going to always show my hands and I was going to talk to the camera and show you what I was doing in the kitchen. And I filmed, I don't know, I filmed like 20 episodes of that and it was fun. I loved it. And then a friend introduced me to live streaming and my, I mean, I was getting like, you know, 75 views, which was a lot for having nobody following me anywhere. I was like 75 <laughs> people saw this. I got all excited. Um, and so, um, but then, then live streaming came along and that, that switched everything over and then all of a sudden I was in front of the camera and what I didn't understand obviously is that I was pretty good at it and it was very natural for me because prior to live streaming if you pointed a camera at me the first thing you would get was <laughs> 
That's what I would do. If you had a video camera or a phone or a selfie or anything, I swear to you, there's like 3000 selfies of me prior to all of this going. <laughs> and so that's, that's, that's what I would do. So it kind of frightened me a little bit, but at the same time I had that background of the hands and I was used to talking to the camera and, uh, and injecting that personality cause you couldn't see my face. So you had to like be kind of over the top and, and I hit, I hit start broadcast and then people started showing up. Mm -hmm. And they've never left. I mean, they've, they showed up a year and I don't know, it's been like a year and a half ago they showed up and they've never left and, and they just keep come more, keep coming. And it's just been, it's been amazing. Um, it's been amazing to watch it unfold and people to catch fire with me. And it, it's, it's been a good, it's been a good, good journey and I'm going to keep it going for a long time. So. Yeah. I bet it's been really fulfilling. And, and I, your following is really excited about you too. I mean, they are really <laughs> involved. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And you know, the things that I'm hearing from your following too is that they're feeling like they're getting more, way more than just how to cook. You know, it's not just about food, right? Yeah, I mean, the premise is based around gathering in the kitchen, right? Because when you have a party, where does everybody go? I mean, mm -hmm. even if you don't want them in the kitchen, it doesn't matter if you have a kitchen the size of a refrigerator. It doesn't matter. Everybody hangs out in the kitchen. When you have a party or people gather in your house, everybody sits there and they want to be there. And so that's the prim that was the original idea. Everybody wants to be in the kitchen. And so I, I base my community on that. I mean, I, we're, we are, we're BFFs. I mean, you come and hang out with me and, and we're BFFs. I know you, I'm invested in your story. I'm invested in what's going on in your life. And, um, and it, <laughs> when you have a hundred followers, that's pretty easy. Now we're getting up into the thousands of people. And I was like, how do you do that? But it's mm -hmm. still, it's, I'm still able to do it. And I, it's like a, it's a God's gift. It feels like to me that he's, you know, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to keep up with these people. And it's, but social media really connects those dots too. Right. Cause I, and I have a visual all the time to see what's going on in their lives. And I go, Oh yeah, that's what's happening. You know, with Sherry. Oh my gosh, that's what's going on with Pam. And, and, but yeah, the community is the heart and soul of this whole. And I think it is for most businesses. Right. right. And I, I took a page from uh, Gary V and he said, you know, I think one of his first books crush it. He said, if you don't have a community, you don't have anything. I mean, you can, you can have a million views on YouTube, but if nobody's talking back, it doesn't matter. You have nobody. And I was like, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. We're going to build this community and it's going to be, you know, a thousand strong and then it's going to be 10,000 strong and it's going to be a hundred thousand strong. And we're just going to keep going it. Remember that commercial <laughs> where the girl's washing her hair and she's like, and I use this shampoo. I don't even know what shampoo and, and they, and and they just keep building out, you know, of like, oh, oh and I use it. And she tells yeah, a and she, yeah. yeah, and she tells a friend and she tells a friend. That's exactly how I feel. In fact, I want to do a commercial like that <laughs> where we have that, you know, and she tells a friend and she tells a friend because it's so, it's so what is happening. Mm. And um, it's, it's, it's just, they're amazing people. And I, you know, I'm the mouthpiece but they, we are, we, I mean, we, you know, go to kitchens is a, we, it's not a me, it's a, we, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's been, it's been the fundamental building block of what I do. And it's been, and I tell everybody, you know, you can't do anything without a community. You've got, you have, that's the first thing you have to do is you have to build that community. And it's, it's, it's good. And I love them and they love me and we are like one big happy family. So, <laughs> well, it, you know, and that's, that's a very unique way. And I think it's probably a natural way for you because you're a very outgoing person. But, you know, with, when you said earlier that for all brands, it's about their community and most brands don't know that. No. Where do they build it with so much engagement? And, you know, that's one of the things that I think is a very mindful approach to how we build our community Absolutely. It's putting them first and what their needs are mm -hmm. and paying attention not only to what their needs are, but what they're talking about right now and then building your yeah. conversation on that. So how did you, uh, is that something that just came naturally to you? And, and do you have a process as to how you're creating your content? 
That's so funny. Somebody just asked me that question yesterday. I have a friend that's teaching um, a class in, in uh, Dallas and she was like, can you just tell me a little bit about your process? And I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to start asking this question and I don't really have an answer. <laughs> But as I thought about it, I actually do have an answer because our, my community actually drives what we talk about. Mm -hmm. um, not always. I mean, there are things that I want to bring to them that they don't even know about, right? Like some, I want them to have light bulb moments. I want them to be like, oh my gosh, I did not know that. And so it's, it's so awesome because I'm learning along with them. So when I develop content, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a doctor. I'm not any of these things. I'm not, this is not where my skill set is, is in the kitchen. My skill set is actually in marketing and PR and advertising. Um, but it's, uh, <laughs> but it's, it, I, when, when I go to do a series of shows for a week, it's really important that I sit down and dig in and research what I'm about to say to them and not just like Google it and go, Oh, that's really cool. I should say that. I mean, reading medical journals. My husband is like, I don't know how you read these medical journals. He tried to read a couple with me one night and he was like, these are so boring. I'm like, I know, <laughs> but I have to know this stuff. And so just full on education. And if I don't know the answer, I go to somebody that I know that I think has the answer. But the really great example is this week, we are talking about organics all week. And mm -hmm. the reason I did that is because it's a hot topic because the environmental working group just put out their brand new clean 15 dirty dozen list. And so it's confusing. Even if they have a spelled out list, people are like, I don't know what that, what does that mean? You know? And so what does organic mean? Cause it's a fruit and it's organic, you know, cause it's a plant. And so we're just like really spelling it out. So my content comes from hot button issues. Um, it comes from, a, you know, them driving them saying, you know, I'm like 20 people asking about how to cook garbanzo beans. Well, I better teach you how to cook garbanzo beans. I mean, so it's, but that's that back end community work that we do, right? Listening to them and responding to what they want. Um, we had, we were talking about popcorn one day and they're like, we should have a popcorn week. And I'm like, let's have a popcorn week. I mean, so it's, so it's it's both things it's outside influences and then community influences um that you know bring us to the content that we get and i try to schedule like a month in advance but that, that didn't always work i mean here's the thing if you try to be perfect in live streaming you're gonna fail mm. if you try to be perfect you're gonna fail because it is there is no perfection and in fact it's better when it's not perfect Absolutely. so yeah. And sometimes I have to go back and go, you know, yesterday when I said, blah, 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 that wasn't exactly right. You're supposed to cook that on 350, not 425. So don't cook it on 425. You know, I mean, so sometimes I have to rewind and that imperfection, but it's okay because that's that authentic, genuine me, you know, talking to you as if we were just on the phone hanging out or in my kitchen hanging out. So, yeah. Yeah, I think overproduction kills a lot of shows and, you know, it really, and obviously with my show it is because <laughs> this is just what it is, folks. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it really um, helps people to, to connect with you better. Yes. And also, you know, if you, you do have things scheduled out months in advance, then something comes up, go with it, you know, because it's Absolutely. really more about the cause. It's more about your issue than yes. anything else. And if your readers need to know about something that came out now, it certainly makes a lot more sense to just do it. Yeah. But yeah. Sometimes it can really throw a wrench in the works. I tried to get all, but you know, I think the problem with live streaming these days is that we feel like we're trying to compete with TV, right? We feel like this, some like craziness of competing with TV. And that's why you see all these super produced shows and this crazy like graphics and slide ins and lower thirds and blah, blah, blah. And everybody's like, put the recipe up and like, do the 360, do all this. And I'm like, look it what you see is what you get. And I'm not trying to compete with TV. I mean, I, for me, we are way ahead of TV because you get to talk to me. You get to have a conversation with me. You don't get to talk to Rachel Ray, sorry, Rachel, but you don't get to talk to her. You get to talk to me. In fact, if you email it's Rachel, you're going to get like 30 layers of people before she might even probably never going to see your email. And for me, you're going to, well, you're going to have to wait like 72 hours, but <laughs> sometimes a week, but, uh, <laughs> but you, you're going to get a response. <laughs> 
from mm -hmm. me. And so, and as our community grows, everybody's like, you're not going to be able to sustain that. And I'm like, no, but I can, I can answer 20 emails, you know, thoughtfully. I mean, I, I can commit to that. I could probably commit to a hundred a week, you know, that come in that I could answer thoughtfully. Um, and so it's, it's just keeping that balance of professionalism. Cause I don't want to hand out a bunch of hooey pooey. That's not correct, which I see people doing as well. I'm like, that's not right. What you just said is not right. That's not right. And it's not even my opinion. It's just that it's not right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, so it's, it's a little bit of, I don't want to like harp down the road of, of uh, fake news, but it's, you know, people just getting on sharing their opinions and it's okay to share your opinion as long as you say, this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. but they're like using it as, you know, this is what it's like, you know, this is what it is. And so, especially in the wellness space and it makes me crazy. I can't watch them, but um, um, there are several, but anyway, but it is, it's, I have a responsibility to give these people correct information and because what I'm doing affects their lives. I mean, it affects their health potentially. So I have to be, I have to be very sure about what I'm saying. So there is a level of professionalism that comes with it. Um, you know, and not fighting with trolls. Like I see people fighting with trolls. I'm like, don't fight with trolls. That's not professional. So there is a level of professionalism, but that's, that's mired in the level of production too, that people are trying to do that. I don't, you know, we're not competing with TV. I just, mm -hmm. I guess that's the short answer there is we are not competing with TV. We are competing with other social media, basically, um, in the live streaming space. So, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think, you know, we see some people who are huge live stream successes. And mm -hmm. when you really look at them, they're very organic. They're not doing the hyper production. They're not worrying yeah. about those details. And that's because we don't want to see that anymore. It's, no, we're done. Yeah. It's very hard to convince a brand that that's okay. It is. You know, it's, it's really challenging. I have a really good example though of a brand um, that I just connected with last week. And I'm so, when I watch them, I get so excited, but uh, real simple, which has 7 million subscribers. Wow. I, I mean, that's like, you know, oh my gosh, but they do, I mean, they cross the board a lot. They do crafts, they do food, they do healthy, they do, I mean, they do all kinds of things, right? Uh, just a real simple, you know, beautiful life is basically what they're trying to do. Well, they do live streaming on Facebook and they have personalities that actually work for real simple, that they have identified. They have a chef who I met last weekend. Um, her name is Dawn Perry and she gets on and you would think real simple, right? It's going to be fully produced and beautiful and blah, blah, blah. No, no, it's Dawn in the kitchen. Somebody's holding the camera and it's like this because they're, you can see that they're like walking through the kitchen, you know, and they're in their test kitchen and she's just cooking and it's an hour long show and YouTubers that freaks them out. They're like, oh, you can't do an hour. I'm like, you have to do an hour. Mm -hmm. That's how you get people as you stay on, you know? And so, but she, I mean, it's super on, I mean, and Dawn is hilarious and she She's cute and she's smart as a whip. And I'm so proud of Real Simple for being the pioneers basically for a giant brand and especially in the cooking world, you know, coming out saying you can do this and you do not have to be, I sat on a panel with her last week, um, food 52, which is, I only have food examples cause that's what I do, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but food 52, same thing. They, mm -hmm. except they don't have an inside personality. They invite, 52 if you watch this I want to come um, but they invite <laughs> chefs to come in right just to plug um, but they invite chefs to come in and they do the same thing there's no there's no rigs there's no nothing there's somebody holding a phone and and calling out comments and I mean it's it's super raw and super real and you know reality TV like spawn you know, all of these thoughts and these imaginations of, wow, we're watching real people do real things, but now we really are watching real people do real things. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch it unfold. So. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. And it's really nice to see things going more and more organic because mm -hmm. that's really what people resonate with. And it actually means that they care about their community yes. rather than push media, which is the old style and really, TV is a great example yes. uh, you know, if, if all you're going to do is push content at me, I don't have to be around. Um, right. I thought it was interesting that you said with live stream, people were saying, Oh no, you can't do an hour. But I see a lot of people jumping on to their first live stream and they're so uncomfortable. They're like, you can just see on their face. It's like, get me the hell out of here. It's awesome. Isn't it? 
and then nobody <laughs> shows up. Well, nobody's going to show up in that first no. minute, no. you know, but uh, I see a lot of people doing it. Kathy Clotes Guest, who is a, a past guest on the show, she does stand-up and marketing. and She wrote the book, Stop Boring Me. I'm giving her a plug because I think she's awesome. That sounds amazing. And uh, it, it's really, it's just who she is and she's putting it out there. And it yeah. takes practice. It, does. it really takes practice. And you yeah. can by yourself in front of the camera. Nobody ever has to see until you're ready. <laughs> I, you know what? I say just turn it on and go. I mean, that's what I did. I watched two mm -hmm. broadcasts and I was like, huh, I think I can do this. I mean, that's pretty cool. Look, people are commenting and on Periscope, that's where I broadcast mostly is on Periscope. Mm -hmm. um, I do some Facebook. In fact, I, we might see a transition a little bit. I depends on what kind of waters that Periscope stays in. It's hard to leave Periscope because I'm a VIP. I'm a gold VIP. I'm in two, I'm in one of their cohorts programs. I'm on their food channel all the time. Um, I've been nominated for a shorty award for Periscoper of the year. So I'm not going anywhere anytime <laughs> soon. That's for sure. But, um, but yeah, so Periscope is where I broadcast, but you know, you see the little hearts. And the first time I watched it, I was like, look at this little, oh, that's so cool. And I hit the screen and it did, I was like, oh, Oh, I love this. And I typed in a comment. And so I watched two broadcasts mm -hmm. and um, I, I went to my kitchen and got an avocado and I came back to my computer. I, took, I set up my phone on this little tripod. I actually had a tripod and I set up my camera and I turned it on. And I was like, hi, <laughs> I, mean, I was like, this is an avocado. <laughs> like, I was holding it like a total goober. You know, I was like, <laughs> looking at it, like it's going to look back at me or like, it's going to say something, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, well, so avocados are healthy fats and they're green and my eyes are green. And it, I mean, it just total nonsense. I'm not even kidding. I wish I had that first broadcast. I, I want, I just always wonder if Periscope has it in archive somewhere because I would love to see that first broadcast, but then somebody commented and then I saw some little hearts go up and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And so all night, I couldn't sleep that night for thinking of what I was going to do the next day. Mm. And not even joking, I was so pumped up about it. And so we came back the next day, same time, and it just happened to be noon. That's, I started my show at noon. I've never left. It's just always been noon. And so, um, noon mountain time, but I, so I went, I came back the next day and I can't remember. I think I had like some walnuts or something. I don't even know. I just had another food and I just started talking about food and more people. And then, you know, 10 are showing up and then the next day, 20. And then, you know, two weeks later, I've got like 150 people that saw me talking and I, and that's more than I got on YouTube and one video and the whole video is produced and edited and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and that's the beauty about live broadcast is there's no back end production. <laughs> right. There's no, you know, we don't have to, yeah, we don't have to go and edit and put music and put logos and do all that stuff. This is what, yeah, well, this is what it is. And so, and I mean, I get as fancy as, you know, like I have a card that I, this is how fancy I am that I hold up and I'm like, so oops, I got a whole bunch of stuff on there. I'm like, so this is me. And I show it in the screen, right? I'm like, screenshot it. So you can come find me, you know, after the broadcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how informal I am about it. And thousands of people show up. I mean, I'm getting five to 10,000 live views every time I go live now. Wow. 10,000 people That's coming awesome. to see what I'm talking about. By the end of the week, sometimes I have upwards to 100,000 people that have seen my broadcast. I, where else are you going to get that? I mean, and I know them and they're signing up on my email and they're coming to, you know, hang out other places. I mean, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. And you don't have to be like, even good on camera. I see people that are not good on camera that are still, but they're authentic and mm -hmm. they're there and they show up every day and it's, you know, and do the work and it's, and they're, they're getting the numbers and they're getting the audience. So yeah, it's, it's, I think it's personally, of course I do. I think it's our future. Uh, and I think you're going to be able to run and hide behind a blog anymore. I think it's right. all going to go video blogging, um, live and recorded at some point. And the written part of it is just going to be like, you know, 150 words, like a, like a header mm -hmm. <laughs> and then your video and then, you know, and then you're out. So yeah, because that's how millennials are ingesting content now is video. They're not reading, they're ingesting it through video. So yeah. Yeah. The next generation. So, so your tips, if somebody was going to start live streaming, tell me what I'm missing is just do it, be organic, be consistent. And especially with the time, because then people know when to come and find yes. it. Don't overproduce it. Mm -mm. Just go for it. Yep. 
Yeah. Just go for it and, and do have fun. Home. Yeah. Right. And just have, I mean, have fun. This is like the biggest thing. My favorite part of my job is going to do my show, you mm -hmm. know, and you think it would be a whip because it's five days a week. I have to actually put on makeup and do my hair and find an outfit and, you know, get my kitchen, make sure my kitchen's clean. I mean, I have to do a lot, a lot goes into one show mm -hmm. and you think it'd be a whip. And I just, I can't, I can't wait to hit I can't wait to hit go live every single day because I know that there's somebody out there that needs what I'm saying. And if I can connect with that one person, then I've done exactly what I came to do that day. So yeah. And you're going to have days where it's like, I don't want to do this. You know, I do not want to do this. And I have a mantra for that actually. And I would suggest this is my last tip and that is energy. You know, when you turn on the camera, you're going to work. And when you go to work, you are, are in front of your audience you need to have energy and it doesn't matter if your dog just you know whatever that your dog did that I was about to be gross and I'm not gonna be but it, you know <laughs> you know your dog just did something bad let's just say that it doesn't even matter or you know whatever it is whatever it is you just have to portray that energy and not in a fake way so what I do is I have a mantra to get myself ready in fact I said it to myself right before we started this is please let me be light into darkness and never darkness into light Wow. And that allows my brain to trigger that it's time to go. This is, it's time to work, Leslie. That, that's my work signal. And then I have my husband who works at home as well. And he'll come in and he'll say, he'll just peek around the corner. And his favorite thing to say, and he said it, I think every day since I've been broadcasting is, uh, he'll text it to me if he's not home. Uh, we're all counting on you. <laughs> Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So I just have a trigger when it's time to go and it doesn't have to be like mine. It can be anything, you know, maybe it's just looking in the mirror and having a big stupid smile on your face, or maybe it's blinking four times. I don't know what it is, but just a trigger in your mind that tells you it's time to work. Mm -hmm. And and you have to have that presence that you're working. I mean, it's fun and you're enjoying it, but you're working. So um Anytime you're in front of your audience, you're working. And so it's, it's really, for me, that having that energy, bringing that energy is probably one of the reasons why um, I'm, I'm successful at what I do because it's, I never have any lack of it. It's always mm -hmm. like right there. I mean, I'm right there and I'm present with my audience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that being present is, is hugely important because if we feel like you're just phoning it in or God forbid, you're reading a script. <laughs> then you know it's just it isn't gonna work it doesn't there's no connection there to something like that so it's you know authenticity comes in many forms um and you can i have notes i have pages i mean i write them out i make notes so that i don't because you know you get trolled you're gonna get trolled you should just uh -huh. get used to it you're gonna get trolled and i think it's funny i think they're hilarious I, even when they're gross i'm like oh my god really you just said that but uh but i have notes to keep me on track even when i'm cooking um i have my recipe and some notes some points that i want to talk about mm -hmm. um but especially if they're statistics because i'm like i don't even know how to remember that so um so i and i read studies a lot like i'll read a study but after that i'm right back to the energetic like you know so what'd you think about that? You know, uh, tell me what your response is. And that's another thing is you want to, that engagement, asking mm -hmm. them questions, you know, type in the number one, if you've ever blah, 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 or give me a holler if you love this content or whatever, asking them to engage back with you. And then you'll find that they're also talking to one another because they're a community. Mm -hmm. And so they're having a conversation inside your broadcast, which is like the pinnacle for me when they're actually talking to one another and, and me, and we're all having a conversation. I am, that's a good day. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of things all wrapped up in a nice little package with a nice pretty bow. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be willing to let your community talk around you. I think that's always been a challenge. Absolutely. You know, uh, when we did this show originally, it was a Twitter chat mm -hmm. and you know, everybody was talking to each other and they were talking to us and they were answering questions or asking questions. Yeah. And I love that vibe, you know, yeah. because it, it, they really are engaged with it. And it's a little more challenging when we do it this way as more of a podcast. Um, but you know, we went to this format because I wanted to actually have longer term conversations with people. And right. So we went to video and I'm digging it, but I do miss the user engagement that we used to get on blab. 
I love doing stuff like this because I, then I'm totally focused on what you and I are talking about and people benefit from the conversation that we're having. So I like this as well. I mean, I, I like, I like anything where people feel like that they've made a connection, you know, um, with, with a conversation or something resonated. Um, that's always my goal is to just have it. I call them light bulb moments, you know, just have it, something resonate, just even if it's just one little tiny thing that you take away from, you know, anything that I do or say, I'm, it's, I'm just happy as can be. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, hopefully that's happening a lot. And that's the funny thing. Cause you have to be okay with not knowing if that's happened or not. I mean, right. I mean, we have to be okay with no, not knowing that that's happened. And then like two years later, you get an email. So I was listening to the podcast with you and Janet and I blah, blah, blah. And now I'm this and I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's, it's, so you never know who's watching, who's listening and who needs you. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. And that's part of that mindfulness, you know, being mindful about that all the time, being mindful that you're at work, being mindful that you're affecting change, being mindful that you're influencing people. You know, the title of influencer kind of drives me nuts, quite frankly, because I don't like it. But I do agree with the premise around it, which is influencing people's lives. You know, we are influencing people either to make a change or to think differently or to get out of their shell or whatever it is, be, but being mindful of that as a broadcaster or as a podcaster or as a blogger, um, I think is really super important and not just not just wanting to hear yourself talk. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something I think a lot of people think about live streamers that for them, it's all about them. Mm. And that does come through a lot with some live streamers that it's like, Hey, here I am. I'm fabulous. Aren't I fabulous? (laughs) And everybody thinks so. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But you see that their communities don't build because Mm -hmm. if, if it's all about you, we don't care. No, it has to be about us. It has to be about the community. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that's, you show that really well. Thank you. And your your fans do too, because they do engage in in a big way, which is fabulous. They are. They're super engaged. When people ask me, you know, they want to work with me and they're like, so tell me what your numbers are. And I'm like, do you want to know my engagement numbers or do you want to know my like hard numbers? Because the hard numbers don't mean anything to me. I mean, I can have 15,000 followers on Periscope, but you know, and even if they're showing up, but how about how many comments I get in one broadcast, you know, so one broadcast I'm pulling over, you know, 2,500 comments in an hour. So how is that engaged? I mean, that number to me would be way more important as a brand than how many people do you actually have? Mm-hmm. Um, because that's where the influence is. The influence isn't in the numbers of people that follow you. The influence is in the number of people that engage with you. That you can so, actually influence. That's right. So <laughs> yeah. I, for those of you that only have like a hundred followers and you're like, I only have a hundred followers, but if you have a hundred followers and 50 of them are engaged with you, you're kicking butt and taking names. Right. So don't ever discount that that number doesn't mean any that big number doesn't mean anything the small number of the people that are talking back to you that you influence through what you're telling them that is the important number so Mm. yeah I love that yeah I love that wow that's on that's a that's a great place to end the show today because I think it's a wonderful lesson for people and and I would like you to let everybody know where they can find you and how they get to see your Periscope because, you know. Because <laughs> that's what we've been talking about. Right. <laughs> you want to see that avocado stare at me is what you want. <laughs> Uh, so Periscope is super easy. They've just, uh, in the recent months, they've opened it up to the desktop. So you don't even need to have, or your laptop or whatever. Uh, you do not need to have the app, although you can download the app at Periscope, just search in the app store for Periscope. You'll find it. Um, it's a blue and red, like logo, like light blue and red logo. Um, and so, but you can go right to your browser and type in periscope.tv forward slash go to kitchens, G O the number two kitchens, and it'll take you right to my channel and you can watch right from there. You don't even need to sign in. However, if you want to comment and leave me hearts, then you need to sign in. And so, you and you should, cause it's big fun. We have so much fun. It's ridiculous. Um, and then 
uh, my website is oh, well, all social media at go to kitchens she owed the number two kitchens I'm very well branded that way I was lucky actually that I got everything and <laughs> I went to every social media I'm like go to kitchens okay I got it okay I got it I mean that was like the first thing I did <laughs> is went and got all the social media um, uh, for go to kitchens so all social media at go to kitchens um, yeah and my website is go to kitchens.com easy peasy easy <laughs> Well, thank you again, Leslie. It's been so great to have you. And, and I think people got a lot out of how they can really apply themselves to live stream and, and understand, you know, how to make this happen for them. And that's very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I love I love sharing this conversation. I love the aspect of being mindful as well. It really it really put me to work on, um, you know, wow, am I being mindful? I mean, that's the first question I asked myself, am I being mindful? And the answer was yes. And so that was good. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> just, just so everybody knows, this will be posted on the blog at Mindful Social Marketing. It'll also be on my YouTube channel, SM Coaching. I don't have all my brand in line. It'll also be on Spreaker or just find me on Twitter at jfouts and I'll be posting and sharing. Very good. Me Thanks, too. Me Leslie. too. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you.